Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. This is the $600 AMD FX8300 base system that we built on the channel in early 2017, just before the launch of the Ryzen 7 series of CPUs. The original OG version, the 1700, the 1700X, and the 1800X. Did anybody really buy an 1800X? Somebody must have, but really the 1700. This video is a retirement party to send this off into the sunset. Or is it? Now, to be completely fair, for any modern tasks, Cyberpunk 2077, Windows 10 multitasking on multiple monitors, actually trying to run current games, Elden Ring and the like, anybody, an FX 8300 or 8350, or for that matter, 9590 system, is hopelessly obsolete and should be retired. However, that doesn't make this useless. The truth of the matter is, for many of the popular games that continue to be played in 2023, this will still do that. There will be compromises. You can't multitask. You can't do a lot of other things at once. You're not gonna be getting 144 frames per second in most of your games. The whole machine in general is gonna be less responsive than a new machine will be. Case in point, a Ryzen 5 7600 will blow the ever-loving pants off this machine six ways from Sunday but it costs a lot of money as well. If you wanna play World of Tanks, World of Warships, Overwatch, League of Legends, CSGO, Dota 2, Rocket League, if you wanna play games that do not necessarily need 4K ultra ray trace detail, this will do that. And it will keep doing it in 2023 and beyond. If you have the money, if you have the means, if, $500 to $1,000 is not a big deal. See our recent $650 build video, a Ryzen 5 5600, which can be had for close to $100, on an inexpensive B550 board with some RAM and some cheap storage. And of course, if you're building a whole machine, even that, that 650 was with case, power supply, storage, and everything. We'll absolutely demolish this in all regards two, maybe three times faster in many situations. But if you don't have the money, and if you're struggling, well then maybe calling this the retirement party of Apex, for you, might be a little bit premature. Today's video was brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. So what's the theme of this video? Retirement party or not retirement party? Actually, this is meant to be a bit of a fun video a bit of a look back, a bit of a retrospective, and it's a return to old school Tech Deals videos. This is not scripted. I'm doing this off the top of my head. I have an idea and a general concept about what I wanna put here, but I don't have line for line, word for word, written down in advance. Instead, I had a look at all the videos that we published on this computer, and to be honest, I was a little bit surprised. There were more videos than I had expected. The original video, titled AMD FX 8300 $600 PC Build Part 1 Parts Overview, was published five years ago, and at least at the time of this recording, had 35,000 views. Three years ago, we did a follow-up to that, not the only two videos, but just as an example. We did FX 8300 versus Ryzen 5 3600X, time to upgrade with 30 benchmarks. That video got 123,000 views. Interesting. That video was a lot longer than the uh, original video as well. The original video was 13 minutes and 47 seconds. And the follow-up video that got over 100,000 views was almost 30 minutes long. Now I've been trying to make our videos shorter and I have been failing at that tremendously because I have a lot to say and I'm not very good at the whole short thing which probably isn't serving me well. YouTube shorts are a thing now and if you've missed YouTube shorts then how YouTube's been shoving them in your face every chance they get. They're trying to compete with TikTok and Instagram Reels and all of that. For those of you who know me, do I seem like the person who can do meaningful content in 60 seconds or less? It's really not my style. In any case, that video was interesting because when I went through it, it reminded me of why I've been saying for years now, 
oh my gosh, those FX chips are absolute garbage and they were trash for years and years and nobody should be using them. I've said that before. Some people go, yeah, man, I feel you. I have one and it's just terrible. But I don't have any money to upgrade, so I have to live with it. But if we're being fair, as true as the statement is that it is, relatively speaking, trash compared to new stuff, if you want to play Overwatch, if you want to play Rocket League, if you want to play Fortnite 1080p in performance mode, an FX will do it. Now, it's not going to give you 60 frames per second, 1% lows, butter smooth, perfect performance all the time. There will be compromises. It will be jittery at times. It will absolutely be playable. And so while nobody with money should still be running one of these, if you don't have money, take those trash comments and set them aside and realize that they are meant in relation to new stuff. It's, it's both remarkable for what it can still do and remarkable for what it can't. I want to do a bit of a history rewind here. Let's go back to the 1990s. In 1991, my first PC that I personally owned, not my first computer, my first computer that I owned was an Apple IIe in 1984. Then I had an Apple IIgs in 1989. In 1991, we got a Gateway 2000 386DX25, four megabytes of system RAM, an 85 megabyte Western Digital IDE hard drive, and a bunch of other very, very cool stuff. By 1993, that machine, it wasn't useless, but it kind of was. Anybody remember what awesome game came out in 1993? Okay, a lot of awesome games came out in 93. X-Wing came out in 93. Doom came out in 93. The list goes on and on and on. Have any of you tried to run Doom on a 386DX25? I guess you can, but no. Can you run X-Wing on a 386DX25? No, you can't. I mean, I guess it will launch, but that's, that's pretty atrocious. So if you wanted to play those kind of games and you want to have a decent gaming performance, a 386 had to be upgraded. And those machines were very expensive. We spent about $2,600 on my 386 and 91, and you don't want to know how much we spent on the 486. That 486 was a 486DX266, with 16 megabytes of RAM and a one gigabyte FastGuzzy 2 hard drive. I was tired of never having any space. We had a little bit of money at the time. Thank you, grandfather, because if your money wasn't there, we never would have gotten that computer. So we did get that machine and that was amazing and it was definitely great and we were able to run all those games and it, la and it just, it, a 486DX266 was a huge step up over 386. Two years later, Windows 95 comes out Yes, I know Windows 95 will run on a 486. No, it won't. I mean, it will, but it won't. It's, it's kind of like running Windows 10 on a Core 2 Duo. It will, but please, for all that is good and holy in the world, don't do that. So it needed a replacement. We upgraded to a Pentium 100, and then a year later to a Pentium 166, and a year after that to a Pentium 266, and then I had a Celeron 300A overclocked to 4.5 when overclocking existed, and then after that it was a Pentium 3733, and then the absolutely glorious AMD Athlon XP series. Anybody remember the pencil trick? The Thunderbird 1.2 gigahertz CPU, that thing was an absolute beast. All of those upgrades from 386DX25 to Athlon XP, about 10 years. And you could not use a 386DX25 in 2001. I mean, you, you could, but not for anything new. What are you going to do? Load Windows XP on a 386DX25? You're not. It physically won't do that. So while you could extend the life of your computer a bit. I am going somewhere with this. While you could extend the life of your computer a little bit in the 90s, if you stretched and played older games and weren't too demanding, the CPU here came out over 10 years ago. Well, the original 8100, the 8300 is a minor refresh, but the basic CPU came out over a decade ago. And the fact that it still runs Windows 10, the fact that it'll still run current games, Overwatch is a current game. They just came out with Overwatch 2. This will absolutely run Overwatch. It is amazing. It is, that is absolutely incredible. And so computers are advancing, 
but not like they did back in the 90s. In the 90s, five years, your computer was e-waste. Today, it's only e-waste if you can afford to replace it. Now, as I said before, this was a 600R build that we did in 2017. And the only reason the system was built in 2017, because I certainly did not need an FX-based system in 2017. In 2016, the first big build that we did on our channel, quick rewind for those of you who don't realize this or remember it, we started this YouTube channel March of 2016. In the summer of 2016, I built our $4,000 Ultimate PC. And the reason I did that was because I needed a video editing PC. I was ready to replace my older machine. I was ready to step up in core count, RAM storage, and everything else. I had an i7 4770K at home, and I replaced it with an i7 6800K, 6 core, 12 thread CPU in 2016, which was really nice. So, of course, I had that. Who needs this? But this was built, as I noted in the original video from back then, because I had at that point never used an FX-based system. I had never touched an FX system. I've owned a lot of AMD machines. I owned an AMD K5. I sold many AMD K5 and K6s to customers back in the late uh, 1990s. Also, for those of you who don't know, I started my first computer company in August of 1996. I've been doing this for a living for more than 25 years now. Oh my goodness, I got old. So, yes, I sold tons of K6s. I owned an Athlon XP. I then owned an Athlon 64. I owned an Athlon 64X2. And then the Core 2 Duos came out. I went back over to Intel, and I owned a Core 2 Duo, the Core 2 Quad, then an i7-920, and then an i5-2500K, and then an i7-4770K, and then the i7-6800K. Well, and you know the rest from the YouTube channel. It's been a lot of upgrades over the years. Maybe more than is necessary, but I consider myself an enthusiast. I've been in the computer business for a very long time. It certainly was easier in the 90s to upgrade a lot when I was in the business because I could just cycle through hardware through the business. But So I didn't need this, but I needed to use it because when we started the YouTube channel, I had never touched an FX system. And initially, my first thought was, well, there's no point. If you watch the early videos in 2016, uh, I did a comparison between the i5-6600K, the i7-6700K. Again, quick refresher for those of you who have forgotten or don't know. Not everybody follows this as much as people in the tech business do. The i5-6600K was Skylake. It went on 100 series motherboards and it had four cores, four threads. The 6700K was the same chip with hyper-threading enabled, four cores, eight threads. The i7-6800K was the high-end desktop chip on the LGA 2011 socket with quad-channel RAM, and it went on an X99 motherboard, completely different platform, different chipset, everything else. So I had those three on the desk. And what I said was, you've got options here between budget to mid-range to high-end, AMD is not even part of the conversation. There was no AMD chip on the desk. I said, what does AMD have to offer? AMD hasn't had anything worth buying for years. And that was true at the time. Because in 2016, this didn't make any sense. You'd build an i7-6700K. Yes, the FX chips were cheap, but they were cheap for a reason. But then Ryzen was coming. And as the hype to Ryzen built, it looked like, wait a minute, this might be something awesome. Ryzen might actually be competitive. And I thought to myself, we're gonna need to know how much of an improvement is Ryzen over FX. So I went and I ordered all the parts and I bought the motherboard, and I bought the CPU and I put this together and I did a video. And in the video I said, the reason this is getting built is I need FX experience so I can compare it to Ryzen. Otherwise, I've got no basis for comparison. I cannot be a, a competent tech reviewer, a tech YouTuber, if I've not used everything. So here we are. Now, I am gonna talk a little bit about regrets I have with this machine and what I would have done differently if I had the opportunity to do it over again. And this will apply to some of you, actually, and it won't apply to others. And this is also, and maybe I should have said this at the beginning of the video, this is a great object lesson in those who buy cheap, buy twice. Or how I just did a $2,000 i5-13600K build video when many of you said, that's absurd. You can fit an i7 in there and a better video card for the same money. 
and you're all right. You can. $2,000 will absolutely buy an i7-13700K. It will absolutely buy something better than a 3070, but at the cost of some of the other components. And this machine right here is a great example of what is wrong with buying a cheap case and a cheap motherboard and a cheap power supply and a cheap cooler and cheap RAM and cheap everything. Because they're cheap, they're not very capable, they're not upgradable, and they're not very nice to use. Part four, correction, part three of the build series of this, for example, was cooling upgrades. Now, you may not be able to see them where you're at, and I wish I was doing fancy B-roll footage, but now that we don't have an editor anymore, I'm not doing fancy B-roll footage anymore. But if you go back and watch part three, which will all be linked down in the description below, I actually added small miniature heat sinks to the VRMs on this board. This was a $60 motherboard, a very cheap MSI um, 970 board. You know, I don't even remember the model number, and I don't have it pulled up. It doesn't matter. So there's no cooling on the VRMs on this board. It has all the features. It's overclockable. It's unlocked. You can you can certainly crank up all those things, the frequency, the RAM, the, the CPU speed, everything, but there's no cooling on the VRMs. And because of the orientation of the fans and the fact that we don't have a downdraft cooler means there's no air flowing over them either. And so I bought these small little heat sinks and I actually glued them to the top of the VRMs to try to get more cooling because this way there'd be a little bit of heat sink, but they were entirely too small and they didn't make any difference. The VRMs on this board absolutely will hit 100 degrees Celsius under load at four gigahertz. Now the FX8300 that's in here is a 3.2 gigahertz chip, but it turbos to 4.2. And I typically ran most of the benchmarks at 4.0 fixed overclock clock speed which wasn't too bad until the minute you're actually using 100% of the CPU and then those VRMs just melt. The only reason this machine still works is probably because it has very little actual use on it. The benchmarks you've seen on the channel are pretty much all this has ever been used for because it's otherwise atrocious. I know those of you who still have FX are probably sick of hearing me say this, but once you use a better machine, let's be honest, once you've used something better, you go back to this, you go, oh my gosh, how did I ever use that? So again, upgrade if you can. If I had this to do over again, I would have built it in a better case with a bit more room. I would have used something, I mentioned this actually in the video, just $10 more would have bought a Cooler Master Masterbox 5 case. A little bit wider, a little bit taller, better ventilation in the front. I would have put a 240 millimeter liquid cooler on it instead of a 120. The 120 is not enough. This thing gets very hot. I would have sought out a, 990, a 990 FX based motherboard. It probably would have cost me $200 at the time. They weren't very common anymore. They were basically discontinued at that point, but I would have gotten a decent motherboard with decent features. I would have put a better power supply in here. That is, you know what? It still works. It's fine. I, there's no problems with it, but it distinctly limits what you can do overall with the machine. Not that it matters in 2023, but for $600, this was built with an RX 580 four gigabyte card. That was a mistake. Now it's $165 at the time and an extra 50 bucks for eight gigs of VRAM might seem ridiculous, but anybody who's paid attention to video cards over the past few years and knows what eight gig versus four gig cards ended up being worth, yeah, should have been the eight gig card. Who knew? So, so an extra 50 to hundred dollars for the motherboard, an extra $10 for the case, an extra $30 for the power supply, an extra $50 for the video card. And maybe in retrospect, going ahead and spending a little bit extra to get the FX 85, uh, 8350. It's been a while since I've said these names. The 8350 has the benefit of being a better bin chip out of the box. Higher default clock speeds, perhaps a little bit more room for overclocking because it's not quite so budget. It'd cost a few dollars extra, but not massively so. Now, all of those changes mean that this, oh, the SSD, this had a 250 gigabyte Samsung 750 Evo, which was, yeah. 
this would have had a better SSD. All of the changes that I would have made to this, I estimate would have increased the price from 600 to 900. Now it is an absolutely fair statement for you to turn around and say, dude, a 600R machine is not a 900R machine. And the mini, that's a 50% price increase. You cannot possibly compare a 600R's computer's value, functionality, upgradability, usability with a 900R machine. Can I? I can see the argument both ways. I can absolutely see the argument both ways. That's fair enough. What I will say is this. This has never been pleasant to use. The RAM has always been fussy because with where the liquid cooler is installed, it blocks the RAM slots and it limited my options in what RAM I could install. Several people have complained that I've always run this with DDR3, 6100, or at best, 1866. I never ran 2133, which this board supports. I have faster DDR3. In fact, I've got multiple kits of DDR3 2400. They don't fit because the liquid cooler blocks it because the case is too small and because the liquid cooler only mounts in that spot. If you move it here, it gets blocked by the components. If you move it here, it doesn't fit right. I've tried moving it around and playing with it. It, it doesn't quite work. So that kind of limited my options. And of course the overclocking and the VRM temperatures and the inability to put a better video card in because of the power supply. I mean, yes, you can put a decent, you, now, years later, you can put video, you know, better video cards in, but it does somewhat limit your options. The boot SSD, which I have since replaced, it doesn't have the 750 Evo in it anymore. But again, I'm a tech YouTuber. I can swap these parts out at Infinium. But if you're just building one machine, if you can afford to make it nicer. And that brings us full circle back to the $2,000 i5-13600K build. That machine, 64 gigs of RAM, multiple terabytes of storage. I believe that had a two terabyte NVMe boot drive and a two terabyte budget SATA drive for the secondary drive. Thousand watt power supply. That's outrageous an i5 doesn't need a thousand watt power supply. No, it doesn't. So you want to put a 5090 on it in two years. Will a 5090 work on a thousand watt? Oh, that's a frightening thought. If a 5090 requires a thousand watt power supply, requires more than a thousand watt power supply. A 5080, how's that? If you want to upgrade the motherboard and CPU in two years and put a 14th or 15th gen in, into that case, do you want to carry it forward or maybe keep it the way it is for a couple of years? What options do you want? Storage? The storage in this was a joke. The number of, of machines that I have built for under $1,000 that I've kept that way is almost zero. Because unless they are purpose-built task machines, you end up just, if you don't spend it now, you'll spend it later. And a lot of times when you spend half the budget now and half later, you actually waste money because you end up with either more components than you need or you ended up buying separate components that may or may not work properly together. My whole comment with the i5 build, for example, was you buy 64 gigs of RAM now and then you never have to worry about compatibility. Sometimes you buy a 32 gig kit now, you buy a 32 gig kit later, they're bought two years apart, they may not work properly together at full speed. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. It's a concern. Do you have the ability to just buy a 64 gig kit and replace your current RAM? Why not just buy the 64 gigs up front? I've run into that too many times. Seriously, it's just... You can shrink that i5 build to 1500. You lose a little bit of storage. You lose a little bit of the RAM. You get down to 32. You make a few adjustments, maybe an 850 watt power supply instead of 1000. You can absolutely get that to 1500. You can't get it to 1000. I had many, many people in the comments below that video saying, do this at 1000. Show us a $1,000 bill. So you can't do a 13600K for a thousand. Well, you can, but you end up with this. It's the biggest piece of dog that I have ever heard. Everyone's laughing, by the way, but it's true because everybody's heard it too. Everyone heard it, right? The look at all, everyone's like, yeah. You end up with an awful case. You end up with an absolute useless motherboard with nothing on it. You end up with a bare bones, nothing power supply. You end up with inadequate cooling. You just end up with a machine that's like, yeah, you, you technically have these components. But the rest of it's just so very unpleasant to use. If you actually only have $1,000, I don't think you should build an i5 13600K. I think you should build a Ryzen 7 uh, 5700X on the AM4 platform. 
And I did a version of that build in the $650 build. If you watch that, I did an alternative parts configuration with a Ryzen 750 700X, a better video card, more storage, a nicer case, etc. I don't have a problem with a $1,000 budget. It's just not an i5-13600K, at least not at the moment. So what else do I have to say about this machine? We produced more videos about this than I thought we would. We, I did a, a, an upgrade video where I showed a GTX 1660 being put in here. That did really well and got a lot of views. I did a video putting two different older video cards in this. I did a 7970 HD. I think about those as I say it because that is really old. I did a 7970 HD versus a GTX 1070 Ti in this. Spoiler alert for those of you who don't want to watch the video. Waste of a graphics card. This CPU is slow enough that it was absolutely CPU bottlenecking the 1070 Ti. FX really was pretty bad. This did not have a problem running a 7970 HD, but the 1070 Ti was really not much fast. A little bit, but not much because of that. We, I did the comparison I mentioned before with the Ryzen 5 3600X, which of course steamrolls this into next week. It's not even close. There were a couple of benchmarks where this was more than double the performance. That is absolutely crazy. Having said that, this still boots, it still runs, it still plays games, 16 gigs of RAM, modest storage. I currently have a different model RX 580 in it. This is a Sapphire Nitro RX 588 gig card, runs just fine. If you built this in 2017 and you don't have the money to change it, play games and run software that is era appropriate to this. Play Overwatch, play World of Tanks, World of Warships, play Rocket League, play League of Legends, CSGO, da, da, two. play Grand Theft Auto V, runs fine. It doesn't run at 150 frames per second, but it runs fine. You don't have to throw it out. But if you can afford it, I know I sound like a broken record, please upgrade it. Upgrades, people, upgrades. I am curious to know your thoughts and feelings on both this machine and this video. This is a different style to stuff we've done in the past year or two. This is more a return to like three to five years ago. This was unscripted and a big chunk of the middle of this video was done in one take. While my son who's going to edit this might do some cuts to do zooms and make it more interesting, a big chunk of the middle of this video was actually done in one take because I know what I wanna say about this. I know what the story of this is from having done it and I know where it sits within the market. And what I'm basically doing is just an information dump of my feelings about what this is and what this is not good for, what I would do differently and its place in the market today. I'm both impressed by it and annoyed by it at the same time. As I said, it's totally functional and it absolutely works. But I, you, you would have to pay me a lot of money to actually make this my machine. I don't know that, you, okay, there's an amount of money for anything, but this would, be, this would be awful to use for me as a daily machine. Y'all can't see it, but sitting over there is my Ryzen 9 5950X video editing PC. This laptop in front of me is an i9-12900H ASUS ROG SCAR 17 laptop. This has a 14 core 20 thread CPU in it that runs up to five gigahertz. It's, once you've used this nice stuff, this is painful, but I don't want any of you to take the message away from this, that you are not a member of the PC master race and that you cannot be an enthusiast if this is your PC. And maybe some of that message has been lost in some of the live streams and videos we've done over the past year or two. As I've thought about it, the truth of the matter is, Everything in life is relative. And if I had no money, and my option was no computer or this computer, you know what? I might very well use this, and I might look at it and go, I'm very happy to have you, computer. I'm glad I have a PC to use and to play with, because without you, I would have nothing at all. And you definitely beat the ever-loving snot out of nothing. And so for that regard, you're a winner. We had a friend recently upgrade from an i5 
3450 to a Ryzen 7 1700. 8 gigs of RAM to 16 gigs of RAM. That old machine booted to a hard drive. Seriously, and a bad one of that. It was a 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. And the new machine has a 480 gigabyte ultra budget SATA SSD. Now, a Ryzen 7 1700 in 2023 with 16 gigs of RAM and a budget cheap DRAMless SATA SSD is nothing impressive. Oh, and the video card. His original machine had a GTX 650. Not 1650, 650. I think that has one gig of video RAM on it. His new video card is a GTX 1650 non-super with four gigabytes of DDR, GDDR5. Now compared to say the RTX 3080 in my laptop here, that's terrible. But compared to his old machine, he got his new computer. He plugged it in, he turned it on, do you know what his reaction was? Wow, this is so much better than my current machine. He was blown away. 8 to 16 gigs, hard drive to SSD, six, GTX 650 to GTX 1650, i5-3450 to Ryzen 7 1700. He thought he went to the moon. And so... Everything's relative. It's so easy to be elitist and say, well, if you don't have the latest and greatest with 64 gigs of RAM, you just suck. That's not fair. Because we can all take joy and pleasure in things. Even in you, FX8300. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. Thank you all so very much for watching. Two gold stars for all of you still here. Like, comment, subscribe, and please do all of the YouTube things. Again, leave me your comment down in the comment section below. I'm dying to hear what you guys all have to say about this very different format and style of video. There will be a couple of links to some of the older videos of the build of this if you're interested. And of course, please click on our channel name and click on the video tab and search through the videos or hit the search button on the very far left side and just type in FX8300 and you'll find even more. Some of those old videos might be interesting to some of you. Thank you all so very much for watching this video, and I will see all of you next time.